Hello, and welcome to another edition of The Empathy Files. My name is Ben Wolkoff, and I would love to talk about two images that I captured today at Crawford Elementary School. These two images are an attempt by administrators, teachers, um, folks at the school to create better hallway behavior. And so they have been plastered up on the walls of the school as attempts to do that. And I wanted to think through the aspect of how students see them, parents, other people who would be in the hallway, and also think about the coercive element of the way in which we dictate rules to one another um, and how we help um, students to be a part of that process. So the first one that you can see right here is uh, an example of one way of doing this. So in this picture, it is a, a, a picture of students that are walking down the hallway correctly, right? The, the correct way of doing that. And the, uh, the poster says, we walk in a straight line with a hug and a bubble. So if anyone has not been in an elementary school in the last 10 or 15 years, a hug and a bubble mean keeping your arms to yourself, and a bubble means closing your mouth, pretending that you have a bubble in your mouth. And these are really weird terms for helping kids to know what they should be doing, but apparently it is enough of a descriptor that kids understand the expectations that are being placed upon them. Now, interestingly, right next to that is a, uh, a poster that says, do not bring any kind of toy guns to school, any kinds of guns, uh, you're going to be expelled. And so you see some dour faces uh, on the, the picture of kids walking down the hallway. There are some smiles, right? Like there are some kids who are excited to be there and, and to be in this picture for, you know, posterity and things like that. Um, but it's also next to this really negative uh, statement of expulsion. Um, and as a student seeing that, I know that I can look at it and say, I am like these kids or I am not like these kids. I can look at that as an adult, as a parent walking through and I know that there is an aspect of control that happens in the hallway that is specific to an expectation that anyone has set. Nobody knows who put up this poster. It's the expectation maybe that it's administrators or teachers or someone in a position of authority. And that is one way of controlling uh, the student experience, right? To post, this is the expectation, this is what it looks like, check yourself. Um, and as a student, if I don't look like the kids in the poster, if I don't know the kids in the poster, if I am not, um, if, if I don't want to do that, then I am out of line. And so there's very little ownership in that part of the process. Um, but certainly, um, I do know the expectations. I know what it, what it means to be a good kid, at least in the hallway in this regard. Now, the, uh, the second image that we're going to be taking a look at is, um, is maybe a little bit more student-centric. It still has the same, um, the same intent, but it has language from the student. Okay, so at the very top, it says rules, but it's spelled R-U-L-S. It's very clear that a younger student or someone clearly who is not as interested in, um, you know, spelling or things like that, or that the teacher just didn't care about that aspect of this because that wasn't the point. These are the rules. And throughout the rules, you can see keep your hands to yourself, um, and that you can do a hug and a bubble in the hallway that's big, but that's not the only thing that you can um, that you can do, right? There's lots of things that you can do in the hallway, right? You can listen uh, to one another, listen to the speaker, you can show respect, you can um, you know show integrity, doing the right thing even when no one else is watching. Uh, being careful at recess is on the the bottom right uh, of. Uh, of this particular poster, um, we have uh, uh, the half the the ability to nicely remind others of the rules, and you have pictures of the kids um, doing these things, but they are student drawn pictures, 
right? You have uh, a kid raising her hand. Um, you have examples of this, but it is written in student vernacular. Clearly, some of these words were given to uh, to kids or had been echoed in the hallway, right? Like, kids are not coming up with hug and bubble on their own, but they might have come up with some of these aspects. Um, and so, to me, this is the same intent, right, to get kids to recognize their own behavior in the hallway. But if I am a student looking at this and I see myself in it far more than just a picture of me doing the right thing, I see this and I know that actually there is a lot more buy-in, right? It's not all written by the same child. It is written by multiple different kids. It is written um, so that other students recognize, oh, I would write it that way, or those are my words, or I know that person who wrote it. Also, I was there. I was in a part of contributing to what needs to happen in the hallway. And while this is not the only way to create a more empathetic hallway and more understanding for what my own expectations are for one another, but it is a really strong way of doing that, where kids are talking to one another about the kind of culture that they want to have in their hallways. It is not a dictate from others. It is homegrown. Even if the teachers have encouraged them to engage in this pro project and, and process, it still is something that they built themselves. And as a parent walking through there, as a teacher walking through there, I see parts of the kids in the hallway, right? That it isn't a story or a message coming from elsewhere. It is a story and a message coming from the kids themselves and in their own words. So to me, this is um, a much stronger approach. Um, it does speak more to listening to children about what they want and what they need and how they help to create the culture of the school, not putting up posters of the right way of doing things um, and sort of the official word and the official message. So that's what I've been thinking about today. I saw these two sort of juxtaposed examples. I really like, obviously, the student one. Um, and there's a lot to be desired around sort of taking a picture of kids, doing it the right way, and, and saying this is what needs to happen. Um, there are reasons for doing both, but clearly there is some aspect there um, that is, is not quite as engaged with kids and doesn't give them the ownership and agency um, in the process. So I wonder how you have tackled this. Have you taken a look at um, the, the posters that are up in your hallways that get at good hallway behavior or how you control and uh, empower great behavior um, in your school or in your environment? Thanks so much for watching, and I hope you have a great day.